This is it, the final weekend of an unprecedented campaign for the White House and the final chance for Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump to make their cases to the American people. The candidates are not wasting a moment, and if you are in a battleground state, you know it. Here's what's developing. In Philadelphia at this hour, Hillary Clinton is set to hold a Get Out the Vote concert with pop star Katy Perry. And we're awaiting a Donald Trump rally in Reno, Nevada, where Clinton has a lead in early voting. Trump hit four states today and announced a last-minute stop in Minnesota for tomorrow. That is typically a Democratic stronghold. Clinton touched down in Florida, where her lead has shrunk to the point where now it is a dead heat between the two. Today, each candidate made a closing argument. My contract with the American voter begins with a plan to end government corruption and to take our country back from the special interests. And you know, I used to be on the other side of things, in case you didn't know. And I led a very nice life. But I also love our country. And this was an easy decision. I went from being the ultimate insider to being an outsider like they've never seen before. We are doing so well. This is a movement like they've never ever seen. I have spent my career fighting for kids and families, and if you elect me, that's what I'll keep doing. Now, my friends, you are a hardy bunch standing out here in the rain. I don't think I need to tell you all of the wrong things about Donald Trump, but here's what I want you to remember. I want to be the president for everybody, everybody who agrees with me, people who don't agree with me, people who vote for me, people who don't vote for me. Well, in the latest Fox News poll, Hillary Clinton holds a two-point national lead over Donald Trump. That is squeaky tight, 45 to 43 percent in a four-way race, which includes the Libertarian and Green Party candidates. Let's kick things off now live with Fox team coverage. Carl Cameron is in Denver, Colorado at this hour following the Trump team. And we will start with Jennifer Griffin in Philadelphia with the Clinton campaign. What are they saying about early voting there? Well, it's very interesting, Harris. On board her plane flying from Florida here to Philadelphia, uh, her campaign manager, Robbie Mook, noted that early voting um, ha is ending tonight or midday tomorrow in Florida and North Carolina, and they're seeing some very interesting results. In Nevada, in particular, where early voting ended on Friday, they are seeing record turnouts, and they believe, uh, the Clinton campaign believes, that Donald Trump would have to win by 10 percent on Election Day in Nevada in order to win Nevada. Hillary Clinton, while she was in Florida today, visited Little Haiti. Um, that's where she made one of her stops. She was joined by Trayvon Martin's mother, Sabrina Fulton, one of the Black Lives Matter's mothers of the movement. As part of their closing argument, we've learned that Gold Star father Kaiser Khan will join Clinton in New Hampshire tomorrow night as she makes her closing argument. Back to you, Harris. Where is the Clinton campaign focusing in the coming days? I mean, really hours. Well, it's really interesting. They are going to be taking their ground game, uh, and she is going to be uh, here in Pennsylvania, going to New Hampshire, and also now we've learned to Michigan. These are states that did not have early voting, and so they're going to be spending a lot of time there in the next 48 hours. Um, she will be at a Katy Perry concert, a Get Out the Vote concert here with Stevie Wonder in Philadelphia. Uh, that's another effort to fire up millennials and suburban moms from the Collar Counties. Concert like we saw in Cleveland last night with Jay-Z and Beyonce say, firing up African-American voters who have been less than enthusiastic, less enthusiastic than they were for President Obama. Th this campaign is going to come down to machine versus momentum. We'll have to see how it plays out, but it may be that on Tuesday that Latino voters, voters who were seen coming out in record numbers, may have written uh, a new history, uh, a new chapter in the history of American voting. Back to you, Harris. All right. No early voting in Pennsylvania, but I have a question coming up, so we're going to play something a little bit different than than we normally do. Jennifer, stay put because we're going to bring you back in a moment. Donald Trump is on a battleground blitz. We're waiting for him to take the stage at a rally in Nevada. His campaign says it has the momentum in the home stretch and they are hoping to ride a wave right into the White House. Carl Cameron live in Denver. Carl. 
Hi, Harrison. As Jen was talking about, uh, Nevada could be tough for Donald Trump. He got a, bought a, a body blow today from Ron Ralston, the Silver State's premier political reporter, who said because of the early vote pile up on the Democratic side, it was, in Ralston's view, almost impossible for Trump to win Nevada. Uh, it's one of those swing states that he spent a lot of time in. He started the day today in Tampa, Florida, uh, Tampa being the Gulf side of the I-4 corridor, which goes across the state all the way up to Daytona Beach and has Orlando in the middle. That's where the big concentration of vote of votes in Florida are. And for Trump, he has to win Florida. From there, he went to North Carolina, another state he has to win. Florida was won by Obama in 2012. North Carolina was one that Romney won. He has to keep North Carolina in the red category. He has to, that has to stay Republican. The other two states that are the most important uh, are Ohio and Pennsylvania. Uh, Trump, was, Trump was heading to Pennsylvania. He'll be going there a lot. He's got a couple of stops in Ohio before Election Day. And, and he'll end up here tonight in Denver, in Colorado, another state where Hillary Clinton's had a bit of a lead. Today he announced that he's going to go to Minnesota. Uh, Minnesota is a state that's been uh, on the Democratic side in presidential politics for several decades. And it, right now, Trump leads there, excuse me, uh, trails there by about four and a half, five points in the average of recent polls. It has turned a lot of heads in the Republican Party because that was a state that is considered largely safe for Hillary Clinton. And for Trump to go there suggests that he wants to expand the battlefield and compete in these blue states. Uh, and just as Hillary Clinton is going to Michigan, a state there where she shouldn't have to play defense, Donald Trump is going to go to Michigan, too, because he wants to try to play a little bit of offense there. Uh, the concern for some Republicans is that Ohio and Florida, North Carolina and Pennsylvania must win states. He's got to win three of the four if he hopes to get to 270 on the Electoral College map, are not yet locked down. Uh, and so he's trying to expand the battlefield where there still may be some work to do in the most principal of the states that he's competing in. Harris. Well, with those details, now it makes sense to me how people are putting on the Internet where the planes of these two candidates are getting closer to each other as they crisscross these battleground states. It makes total sense to me now sure. how those pictures can happen. The candidates have their last minute pushes, those ads on the air. Uh, what can we learn from those ads? A couple things. Uh, Donald Trump spending $4 million on a two-minute ad that is uh, essentially a lament about the way the country is being run and why he'd be better than Hillary Clinton. Uh, there's a little bit of attack politics in there, uh, as opposed to Hillary Clinton and, and her, her closing argument ad, which is much more about what her goals and priorities are and, make, and, and only a sort of glancing references to Trump. Uh, the other aspect to it is the ad wars for years and years and years and the spending that goes with them have always escalated. This year is the exact opposite. Uh, right now, there have been 3.3 million ads run uh, across the country and about 2.5 billion dollars spent. It sounds astronomical, but in fact that's down from 2012. And uh, when you look at who's spending the most, Hillary Clinton is spending more money on ads in more places than Donald Trump has. And to put an even finer point on it, Bernie Sanders, who hasn't been in the race for a long time, has actually aired more TV ads than Donald Trump has. Uh, now, what does this tell us about the Trump campaign? Donald Trump has gotten a tremendous amount of free news coverage and hasn't thought that it was necessary to run those ads. Uh, most of the inventory is bought up, so it's not like you can, uh, f in places that matter, find a spot to put an ad on because they're all already booked. Uh, so it tells us that the advertising strategy, the actual tactical strategy on which battleground states to spend the last 72 hours, uh, all are changing in this election from what has been the historical practice. And when it comes to going to Minnesota, a lot of Republicans are wondering if it's a gamble that can pay off for Trump or potentially a gamble that could cost him the election. All right, Carl, thank you very much. As I did with Jen, I'm going to ask you to stay right where you are because we're going to bring Jennifer Griffin back in and let's talk ground game now. Jen, I'm going to start with you and with the Clinton camp doing what they need to do to make sure that they're tight on the ground. I read something today about those concerts. And uh, they're not just a way for them to get out free tickets to people. It also allows them to analyze and to collect information on people who are at those concerts and to also mobilize them. So we're going to work to get her uh, technical shot back up. We're having some technical difficulties with Jen's satellite uh, shot. So we'll go straight to Carl Cameron with this. So, Carl, I laid it out there a little bit. Clinton's broadening out her, her expanse, if you will, on how to work that ground game sure. with these free concerts. Sure. So it's a way to get information about people and mobilize them. But on the Trump side, they're starting to spend some cash on the ground game. What does that look like? Well, they're, they're, they've got a, a, a collaborative effort with the Republican National Committee. Uh, and they have somewhere in the neighborhood of 100,000 shifts going on this weekend 
uh, on, t on the phones. Uh, calling up folks, making sure that they get to the polls. They want to knock on four million, uh, four million doors. There'll be about 100,000 volunteers involved in that. And Trump plays big data, too. Uh, and they've, uh, he, has, he has a couple of companies that have been collecting big data around the country. And uh, one of them was the operation that used to work for Ted Cruz. It's called Cambridge Analytica. And they use social media very, very effectively. This is what the Obama administration kind of perfected. And Hillary Clinton inherited that on the Democratic side. Uh, the Republicans have been working very, very hard to catch up when it comes to using social media and big data to find voters. What Trump has been doing throughout his campaign is he's been using big data and social media to find pockets, mostly in the rural exurbs, well past the suburbs or the inner city, to try to find the most conservative Republican voters that he can bring out. That's why he was in uh, Selma, North Carolina the other day. Uh, that's why he's going to go to Reno tonight. And when he comes to Denver, uh, it'll be a huge event that has, he's going to get most of the audience from, social media from outside of the city, not from inter, in, in the interior. They both got big data, they're both using it, but more importantly, they're both spending less on TV commercials than the trend line has been since the beginning of television. Yeah, Harris. that's really interesting. And I know from talking to the, the Trump campaign that when they do hold their big events, just like Hillary Clinton is doing with these free concerts, that it is also an opportunity for them to make sure that people are registered. Because what you want to do with these events, Carl, is make sure that they don't, aren't just loving you, but they're loving you enough to go vote, especially in those states like Pennsylvania where people have yet to begin voting. Carl, always good to see you. Sorry we lost Jen Griffin. She, By the way, I don't know if you noticed, she was on a moving bus. So sometimes technical difficulties happen when you're, you know, Know, you're crisscrossing the place. Carl, thank you. Fox News is America's election headquarters. And stick with us on election day and night for live coverage, up to the minute results, and in depth analysis as our America chooses our next president. We're live Tuesday. Three days to go. Let's take a look at the race for president according to the Fox News electoral scoreboard now. And you can see Hillary Clinton still has an advantage. It's narrowing, though. To win, Donald Trump needs the solid Republican states, the leaning Republican states, and all the toss-up states as well. He'd also need one more state like North Carolina, Michigan, or Pennsylvania to win. So that's how it is right now. A key to all of that is the battleground state of Florida. We said just before the commercial break, it's a must win for either of them. Today is the last of early voting in 51 of the state's 67 counties. And the early voting turnout, in-person turnout, this year has reached historic levels. Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton held events in Florida today. And Clinton's running mate, Tim Kaine, is holding an event right now with John Bon Jovi. Yep, again with the free concerts, I was talking about how they can mobilize those free tickets into lots of information and get some of those people who are pledging their support to get out there and talk about the candidates. Steve Harrigan is live for us in Miami, Florida. Steve? Harris, both candidates back here once again in Florida, in part, as you mentioned, because the stakes are so high here with 29 electoral votes, and also because the race is so tight here in Florida, really razor-thin margins from the early voting. Almost 6 million people have voted in Florida, and the difference in voters between registered Republicans and Democrats is just about 7,000 votes out of 6 million, so it's really a fraction of 1%. As far as the data goes from this early voting, we can tell a couple of things. First, more women are voting than men. 55% of the early voters have been women. Second, African-American voters continue to underperform this time around as in comparison with 2012. They represented 22 percent of the early vote four years ago, this time around just 15 percent. That could be bad news for the Clinton campaign, but what could be good news for the Democrats, the Hispanic vote in Florida, as in many other states, is overperforming. Hispanics made up just 10 percent of the early vote four years ago, this time around 14 percent. And one thing to note about that Hispanic vote in Florida, especially in the central part of the state along that key I-4 corridor, one in three of the Hispanic early voters has been a new voter. This is someone who has never voted before in a presidential election. So that really could point to some gains in the Clinton ground game here in Florida, Harris. All right. And, and, you know, we were talking about all of these states and how important they are. We've got another one to talk about, Steve. We appreciate that from Florida, the big electoral prize of Ohio. And you probably know from listening and, and watching that no Republican has ever won the White House since Lincoln without carrying Ohio. So let's take an early look at voting underway there. Election officials insist voter fraud is highly unlikely. 
We'll talk about what if the GOP candidate would want a review of what's happening. That's next. And Hillary Clinton. The so-called firewall for her. States could be in danger of a breach. It's all tied up in one particular state where voters are known for going rogue. All that and more ahead on the Fox Report. For months, Donald Trump has made claims of a rigged election, a cornerstone of his campaign, in fact. And the Secretary of State in Ohio, one of the biggest swing states, has said for weeks that there's no way anything like that could happen. Now John Ustedt, a Republican, says he would, in fact, take a second look at the results if Donald Trump asked him to in that state. But he would also need evidence to do that. Peter Ducey has more. He's live in Cleveland tonight. Peter? Harris, that Republican Secretary of State John Husted has gone from just a few weeks ago saying that Trump's talk of a rigged election is irresponsible to saying now that if on Tuesday night Donald Trump calls him and says he wants to contest the results because he suspects widespread fraud affecting Ohio's final tally, then Ohio would investigate, but only if Trump or somebody else has proof. And even though Husted says the election can't be rigged in Ohio, he admits they find pockets of fraud all the time. Voter fraud does exist. It's rare. It's a fifth degree felony in the state of Ohio. And if you do it, we will prosecute you. And we've sent people to prison over this. Uh, in the last presidential election, we found hundreds of cases, not thousands, but hundreds of cases. We turned those over to prosecutors. And, and some people uh, were eventually prosecuted and went to prison over it. But it's not widespread. And, uh, but we don't accept any case of it. Secretary Husted is well known here for saying that he's trying to make it easy to vote and hard to cheat. And one way he's attempted to reach this balance is by purging people from voter rolls that have been inactive for more than six years, including dead people. That's something that some Democratic groups have been fighting, but it makes it harder for people to vote using somebody else's identity, whether that person is alive or dead. There have been some early voters this election cycle who thought it was too easy to cast ballots and reported that officials in person never asked to see their ID. But that's just the way that it works here in Ohio, since voters who go to the county board of elections are actually just filling out an absentee ballot that then gets sent in. So no reports of voter fraud yet, but you can bet that come Tuesday, they'll be watching in Columbus and at Trump Tower. Harris? Yeah, and I would imagine for these polling stations, too, there's just so much pressure for everybody to get it right. Uh, Peter Ducey, thank you very much. A special Saturday night pre-election edition of Fox Report. So glad to have you along. I'm Harris Faulkner. On the road to the White House, let's now go through Iowa. The eastern part of the state is reliably Democratic, but some western counties now are leaning Republican, and current polls show Donald Trump with a slight lead. Today, Senator Bernie Sanders went to Iowa to rally support for Hillary Clinton. How did that go? Let's ask Rich Edson. Rich? Hey, good evening, Harris. And this afternoon's event here at Iowa State University illustrates the challenge the Hillary Clinton campaign has when it comes to getting Sanders voters to support her. We talked to one sophomore here at Iowa State. He says the Sanders Clinton campaign asked him to come up and speak at this Clinton event. So he did. He gets up, he starts criticizing Donald Trump, and then at a Hillary Clinton rally, he starts criticizing Hillary Clinton, says she's no better than Donald Trump that she's a capitalist, a crony capitalist, and that she doesn't care about us. The Clinton campaign took him off stage. We caught up with him after the rally, along with some other Sanders supporters. Lesser of two evils is still evil. Trump's not any better. But Hillary Clinton is still terrible. He's made it evidently clear that Hillary Clinton is the right choice. And over the summer, I went fully behind Hillary, and I'm really excited for her as a candidate, but also excited that Bernie's supporting her as well. A small crowd here at Iowa State by Sanders standards. He did, though, hit on his signature issues of Wall Street regulation, climate change, income inequality. He says that voters, his supporters, have to get beyond their personalities. He says whether you dislike Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, this is a campaign about issues. And he says the issues make it clear his supporters should back Hillary Clinton. If Donald Trump wins this state by a few votes, and if those few votes and those electoral votes make him president of the United States, there are a lot of people who are going to be dealing with that reality for the rest of their lives. 
So this is where Clinton needs turnout. Here on college campuses, the eastern part of the state, it's a more democratic part of the state. They've had early absentee voting in the state of Iowa for a few weeks now. The early results, according to the Secretary of State's office, show that returns are down for Democrats and Republicans. But if you look at the percentage of returns that have come in thus far, at this point, Republicans are faring better than they did in 2012. Democrats are, fear, are faring slightly worse than they were back in that last presidential election year. I respect to you. Rich, thank you very much. Millions of Americans are streaming to the polls on Tuesday. They plan to. The feds will be keeping a close eye on the security of those votes. On alert for potential cyber attacks, the FBI and the Department of Homeland Security are offering to work with states to assess threats to their election systems. We have uh, been working with state election officials, local election officials, to help them with their cybersecurity when they ask. I'm pleased that uh, 18 states have now come forward and requested our assistance uh, in their cybersecurity efforts. Brian Yanis is here now with more on what's being done to protect the security of our voting. I'll get to what the real concerns and threats are in a minute. Mm -hmm. 18 out of 50. I'm thinking if you're being offered help to protect the American votes from cyber attacks, why wouldn't it be all 50 states? It is a, they've been in contact with all 50 states. Representatives of these states. Yeah, but states only 18 took contact. a bite, he said. Well, look, what they're doing is the DHS is going to be monitoring the situation from the DHS a Cybersecurity Center. They'll be looking at all the election day results, and when states need help, they're going to be there. They'll be monitoring the situation. They're also going to have cyber fly teams available, which will then be able to come into action if there's anything going on. So if they see any kind of major cybersecurity threat, that's when they'll be put into action. So the big thing here is that the are in communication with the states, um, and if anything is, is offbeat, they're mm -hmm. ready to, uh, to handle it. And this is what the DHS Fly says. teams, like yeah. the green berets <laughs> of, of cyber warfare, right. I suppose. All right, let's talk about the real threat, because okay. it really might not be the vote count. It might be something else. Exactly. It is a very slim to really... And the, the likelihood of, of hackers really affecting the presidential vote, the outcome of the vote, that is changing your vote from Trump to Clinton, is not what the real concern is. The real concern is that they'll be able to cause chaos and confusion on Election Day by going after two things. The voter database, stealing voter information, including registrations and going after those servers. Oh, wow. And also affecting this Department of State state election websites. That is where you actually see the results pop in. So if a mm -hmm. hacker goes into that website mm -hmm. and it shows the jurisdictions in terms of Trump winning or Clinton winning, and they are able to alter that, that might cause chaos and confusion on Election Day. And during a time in which there's a ton of mistrust and in during a close election, if those websites go down where the jurisdictions are coming in and it's tallying up the votes, that is the wow. concern. Yeah. So yeah. that chaos also signals, I mean, you conceivably could have long lines. And what we've seen in the past is that you'll go past that polling, polling cutoff time, mm -hmm. say seven, eight or nine o'clock, whatever it is, that could affect whether or not people want to stand That's in right. line. Media websites and the State Department websites could be affected that actually show those jurisdictions turning red or blue. And wow. if you don't know, or they're altered, then all of a sudden, when you've got people talking about a rigged electoral system and during a close election, it could get chaotic. And that's what so some of these hackers So back to want. my original point, <laughs> if the government is Offering to help, 18 out of 50, shouldn't it be all 50 states? Again, the representative, they said that all 50 states have been contacted. Okay. Okay, so I think I think they'll be monitoring all 50. I would be, we, we cross and our fingers. And you'll be monitoring we, we, them. Exactly. All right. Another thing, these electoral voting polls, when you go in and you put your vote yeah. in, they're not connected to the Internet. So that's why they also believe they're protected in that end. Okay. So that's another know. protection in that sense. Yeah. Thank you, Brian. Yeah, no Anderson. problem. Let's talk about America's secrets now. And with this developing story, two State Department contractors with decades of hands-on experience and devoted to protecting the United States' most sensitive secrets are now speaking out for the very first time about Secretary Hillary Clinton's tenure. Chief Intelligence Correspondent Catherine Herridge reports. She was her, was her oyster. Government contractor Dave Witness says he worked within the State Department's Office of Security Technology, which is responsible for cameras, alarms, and sweeping for bugs. He quickly noticed the rules didn't seem to apply to Secretary Clinton and her team. State Department was a oyster. It was great for the foundation, great for the Clintons to, to be able to have such a great position. 
As Mrs. Clinton was sworn in as secretary in January 2009, government contractor Emil Smith says he was also working at the department. State Department rules are clear. I helped write those rules. Smith reviewed some of the FBI witness interviews known as 302s with Fox. They show secure facilities for classified information known as SCIFs were specially built for Secretary Clinton in her Washington, D.C. and Chappaqua, New York homes. Doors that were supposed to be locked were left open. You know, if you've got an uncleared uh, person in there, it's, it's, it's automatically a compromise. It says that there were personally owned desktop computers in the secure facilities at Secretary Clinton's homes, yet she told the FBI that she did not have a computer of any kind hmm. in these facilities. If somebody said they're there, then they probably were there, and, and you know, the reason you would deny it was because you probably didn't have approval. Witness team handled requests for Mrs. Clinton's devices. It was unfathomable that it would be used for anything other than just unclassified communication. After new emails were found in the Anthony Weiner sexting case belonging to his estranged wife, Clinton aide Huma Abedin, the FBI reopened the Clinton email investigation. We do know that his estranged wife's emails are on that computer. Whether it's the private email server, whether it's uh, this private laptop, you know, if there's classified, one document on there that's classified, it's a violation. Somebody violated the law. Throw all the politics out the window. What we're talking about is the defense of this nation. Asked about Smith and Whitna, the State Department emphasized the head of diplomatic security told the FBI Secretary Clinton was, quote, very responsive to security issues. In Washington, Catherine Herridge, Fox News. Now here's an invitation you should not refuse. To be a part of our election night coverage, if you're being social, use the hashtag Fox News 2016. If you voted or you're getting ready to vote, post a picture of yourself, your friends, your family, your dog, whatever, on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram with the hashtag Fox News 2016. Show us who you're supporting and tell us why, if you'd like to. You could see it right here on the Fox News channel on election night from our brand new studio. Ooh, that'd be kind of cool. Speaking of social media, hop on it right now because the Fox News political insiders are next. We love it when you tune in and chime in at the same time. Our Fox News social media pages are popping up at the bottom of the screen. I'm coming right back. We're not even counting them in days any longer. We're down to like 72 hours now until America elects a new president. That's the insiders you're looking at. The nominees kicking their campaigns into overdrive as the clock winds down. And let's bring in our Fox News political insiders, John LeBoutlier, former field director for President Ford in 76. He started when he was nine. Uh, and then held office as a Republican congressman for New York. Pat Cadell, strategic advisor to President Jimmy Carter, a Fox News contributor. And Doug Schoen, former strategic advisor to President Bill Clinton six years in the White House doing that now a Fox News contributor. In fact, we made some news last week uh, that went viral all over the place because you were reconsidering based on where right. you saw the sure. race was last Sunday night, what you were going to do with your vote. And you and I talked about you potentially not voting for the first time in your professional career. And, and I decided I will not vote for president. I will vote for down ballot races, but I cannot. Wow. Of affirmatively cast a ballot. You could bright me in. I probably should, Pat. I brought you in last time. And I appreciate that. I, you were one of many who did that. Yes. Oh, God. I have but to you're say. not voting for Hillary Clinton. No, but if there's a boomlet for myself, anything's possible. Oh, my well, goodness. Well, he has become the honest so citizen of this. Uh, what are you uh, seeing in the race yeah, right now right. that yeah. keeps you where you are sure. in terms of that? Well, look, what keeps me there is both candidates have been unrelentingly negative. Neither has really outlined a vision for the country. We need bipartisanship after this election, and neither candidate is offering it. It is very dispiriting. Well, in all fairness, though, Donald Trump might not have been an, a candidate for you anyway, because you're, you're a Democrat. I disagree with him philosophically. But there are Republicans who seek consensus, as there are Democrats. Bill Clinton did. Hillary Clinton has mm -hmm. not. And I dare say won't. All right. Does Donald Trump, though, have an opportunity with where Hillary Clinton is now starting to have to grab harder? The black vote, for example. We're reading about that in places like North Carolina. Now, that's based on early voting and they may still come out but she's got another concert so she needs millennials tonight she needed the black vote you saw her with jay-z and beyonce last night all right you know what 
He had an opportunity for the last six months to reach out to all these people, non-traditional Republican voters, who were ready and accepting of a new messenger mm -hmm. and a new message. He chose not to do it. As we've talked amongst ourselves, they've opted to run a base election. They what did, does that mean? They play to the base. They play to the 41, 2 percent who loved Donald Trump, who, as he said, would, would stick with him even if he went out on Fifth Avenue and shot somebody. The question is, are there enough of those people in enough states to get to 270 electoral Do votes? we see a difference, though, with him going to Minnesota, which is reliably, at least in the past, uh, like democratic? It. So is he trying to do something different? A lot of states different? are in movement. Let me say this to John's point, and also to Doug's point. I've just got new polling back that we did with uh, I supervised, or at least wrote questions for the Breitbart poll. 63% agree with Doug about the yeah. issue that this that she will be crippled. Uh, uh, say it's their very constitutional crisis. Constitutional crisis concern that she will be consumed. If that were the issue of all the voters going in, the election would be over. If uh, similarly the views about the political class, which, I mean, huge numbers of our own voters, Democrats and others, who say that this election really should be about whether the people or the political class, the theme that we have talked about for two years, that would be a overwhelming because two to one people say that if she wins, the political class wins, and by 14 points, they say if Trump wins, the political class will lose. However, what, the, when you're doing a base campaign, you're not reaching out. There are more voters. I will tell you this. If there were, the question is how many votes are in the bank? Because depending on how many have been cast, in insane early voting, mm -hmm. we will have, if there were. Did you say I insane early voting? Because I know you don't voting. like early voting. No, no, because it doesn't culminate, as we said, and John said last week, like a jury trial, uh, toward election day. We could do something to expand the voting. All I want to say is, I was there in 1980. The difference between what happened, it's moving, I think, the way it did for Reagan, but it is the problem of all the votes. Oh, that's in the interesting. Back. All right, so in which states could be a surprise on election night? Let's talk about that when we come back. Stay close. Our viewers want to know, uh, Colleen Whitman writes, what states could be a surprise on Tuesday night and what about the Senate seats? Let's stick with just the states. Put up the scoreboard if we can, the Fox News scoreboard, which looks at where the electoral votes are right now. Doug, you want to go first? Yeah, sure. Uh, Harris, as the scoreboard shows, the Secretary of State now has enough electoral votes to win Projected. the presidency. Projected, yes. To me, the big deal is Pennsylvania. If she loses that, it's down to two or three points. Donald Trump can win. As I do the math, Pat and John may disagree, but as I do the math, without Pennsylvania, he doesn't win the presidency. Uh, all right, so that's where she is tonight, hanging out with Katy Perry. Uh, so let, let's talk a little bit about what it would look like if she lost Pennsylvania. Would that be a surprise to you? I believe, and remember one thing about Pennsylvania that's critical, there's no early voting in Pennsylvania, just absentee. That means that a whole electorate will now be exposed if Trump were to close the message I'm talking about or have an effect. And if Pennsylvania goes, so I believe the election would go, we, because but all of those upper Midwest states, most of them do not have early voting the way that we have in the South and the West. All right. And so so, so, so let me I say this because I want to get it out. I think that when we look back on, on this election, the unreported story, it's starting to be talked about more this week, is the rise of the Latino voter. <clears throat> They're registering them uh, quickly, the Clinton people are heavily turnout in the early voting in Florida, North Carolina, Colorado, Nevada, obviously Arizona. And that is a problem for Trump. I believe it'll be a big problem for Trump. In fact, Can I, I make think it may one, cost him the election. One quick point. Go Both ahead. Pat and John have emphasized the need for an inclusive message of change against the political class. We've done it, Harris, as long as we've been with you. Had Donald Trump underscored and emphasized that as part of his close, I think he would have had a better the, chance. The half-hour speech. The half-hour no half speech, speech, speech. But again, I mean, I draw the attention to the fact that Donald Trump's sort of the way he rolls has been to do things on his own time. So you've got 72 hours left. We don't know what he's going to well, do. If he, but bought, for instance, if he bought a half hour, we'd know it. There are some criticism uh, or at least questioning as to why he would go to Minnesota. Although I would say this. 
I mean, Mike Pence is going to be in Wisconsin, and he's probably more equally yoked, if you will, to Paul Ryan in terms of a relationship there. And Paul Ryan needs to win Wisconsin as Going well. to Minnesota tells us that their campaign math is short of 270, and they're looking for a state to put into play that they hadn't uh -huh. fought before they could get. Uh, they tried well, it with New Mexico this week, uh, in and out of there. Uh, all right, working. I want to get to one other thing, and, and uh, this is a viewer that says, early voting site in North Carolina, she doesn't speak of where, but it wraps around the building at least a four-hour wait into the line earlier today. Go ahead, Pat. Well, it depends on who it, who it is. The early, as I said, the early voting, right now, the boats, I believe, are moving his way. And have over the last the question weekend. Is, is it too little, is too it late? Too, too little, too late. And has so he when does it become to too late in this day message? of social media, though? I mean, he can reach millions of people. Yeah, but if forty percent are already voted, and now he That's starts getting point. upward momentum, there aren't enough remaining that voters not to win. Can, can I ask a question though? That's really oh, no, basic for both the, the former pollsters here, and you guys still do polling. <laughs> I'm still. How much I'm of it should we trust at this you point? You know, it's a very good point. With the margin of error in polls, three, four percent with the possibility of a hidden vote undecideds breaking potentially against uh, the incumbent party the Democrats Trump still has a chance beyond the polls I don't count him out but the clear front runner now in terms of the states and indeed the national vote we don't is know Hillary how, that's right we don't know how big the surge is but in the polls the problem is they're all relatively close no one knows what the model is or who is right. going to vote and whether most of the models are still based on 2012, okay. which may not be. Okay, just okay. Real, real quickly, the yeah. last 72 hours, if it were you on the stump next to either of these mm -hmm. candidates, and you've stepped away from Hillary Clinton, so you could pick well, Donald Trump I if could. you want, just I for fun tonight. But I could. So, what would you tell One him? word, change. Second word, corruption. All I'd be talking about. Pat? That's right. Well, that's what I, that is what I've already said. And that's what Pat's been that's saying. That's what I've been saying. This is an election to choose who runs the country. For her, I don't know anything she can say other than I'm sorry, I'm dishonest. I don't know what she says. All she can say is what continue. she's saying. I mean, the other continue. Thing I want to throw in, the other I want thing, to give this to the, you, uh, too, The other though, thing John. I want to throw in is that we're underestimating something, which is the blocking and tackling of politics, of campaigning, includes identifying voters, registering them, and getting mm -hmm. them to vote. Okay, the Clinton so campaign has invested what? eight months a hundred million bucks in doing this thing. Yesterday they had a million people out handing out literature for okay. the Clinton campaign. This is not being talked about enough one and it's worth a point or two on election two. All right, but one yeah, of the things that signals that throughout all the ads and all that you've just, discuss, just discussed with us now, that Hillary Clinton may still have some weaknesses, though, is what she's doing with these free concerts. And I've been talking about that this hour. Well, so the free tickets right. allow them to, to analyze, to mobilize. They can learn about right. people there on the ground. Right. So they're okay. still needing to they're do it. They're scared to ahead. death about millennials. These concerts are a way to mobilize them. Look, the Secretary of State knows that her lead is vulnerable. Patton, John are right. She's got a clear chance to win, but if the millennials and the African Americans and the Hispanics don't perform as they did in 2012, it could be a much closer. Does it work to have Barack Obama say, "If I'm voting for Hillary to the black community, yes. you should vote too"? It helps. That That's helps. what he's saying on the stump. And also to millennials and Sanders voters. And telling the illegal aliens that they they'll be protected if they vote. And they're ending the campaign in Philadelphia with the president, the vice president, and but Hillary the Clinton. The point is, and it is trying to hold what they have or trying to get it out. Expand it. The fact is he is expanding and right now if this election were about big issues he wins all right we'll be right back last word doug go yeah trump has missed a key opportunity to mobilize democrats as he did in the primaries huge huge mistake we don't know what they'll do though we maybe they'll still we vote for him as they, they did still come out. a lot of them yeah. don't like hillary there you go uh good to have you gentlemen that's how fox reports next Jesse Waters and his world. Stay close. In Ralston's view, almost impossible for Trump to win Nevada. Uh, 
It's one of those swing states that he spent a lot of time in. He started the day today in Tampa, Florida, uh, Tampa being the Gulf side of the I-4 corridor, which goes across the state all the way up to Daytona Beach and has Orlando in the middle. That's where the big concentration of voter votes in Florida are. And for Trump, he has to win Florida. From there, he went to North Carolina, another state he has to win. Florida was won by Obama in 2012. North Carolina was one that Romney won. He has to keep North Carolina in the red category. He has to, that has to stay Republican. The other two states that are the most important uh, are Ohio and Pennsylvania. Uh, Trump, was, Trump was heading to Pennsylvania. He'll be going there a lot. He's got a couple of stops in Ohio before Election Day. And, and he'll end up here tonight in Denver, in Colorado, another state where Hillary Clinton's had a bit of a lead. Today, he announced that he's going to go to Minnesota. Uh, Minnesota is a state that's been uh, on the Democratic side in presidential politics for several decades. And it, right now, Trump leads there, excuse me, uh, trails there by about four and a half, five points in the average of recent polls. It has turned a lot of heads in the Republican Party because that was a state that is considered largely safe for Hillary Clinton. For Trump to go there suggests that he wants to expand the battlefield and compete in these blue states. Uh, and just as Hillary Clinton is going to Michigan, a state there where she shouldn't have to play defense, Donald Trump is going to go to Michigan, too, because he wants to try to play a little bit of offense there. Uh, the concern for some Republicans is that Ohio and Florida, North Carolina and Pennsylvania must win states. He's got to win three of the four if he hopes to get to 270 on the Electoral College map, are not yet locked down. Uh, and so he's trying to expand the battlefield where there still may be some work to do in the most principal of the states that he's competing in. Harris. Well, with those details, now it makes sense to me how people are putting on the Internet where the planes of these two candidates are getting closer to each other as they crisscross these battleground states. It makes total sense to me now sure. how those pictures can happen. The candidates have their last minute pushes, those ads on the air. Uh, what can we learn from those ads? A couple of things. Uh, Donald Trump spending $4 million on a two-minute ad that is uh, essentially a lament about the way the country is being run and why he'd be better than Hillary Clinton. Uh, there's a little bit of attack politics in there, uh, as opposed to Hillary Clinton and, and her, her closing argument ad, which is much more about what her goals and priorities are and, make, and, and only a sort of glancing references to Trump. Uh, the other aspect to it is the ad wars for years and years and years and the spending that goes with them have well, this is it, the final weekend of an unprecedented campaign for the White House and the final chance for Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump to make their cases to the American people. The candidates are not wasting a moment, and if you are in a battleground state, you know it. Here's what's developing. In Philadelphia at this hour, Hillary Clinton is set to hold a Get Out the Vote concert with pop star Katy Perry. And we're awaiting a Donald Trump rally in Reno, Nevada, where Clinton has a lead in early voting. Trump hit four states today and announced a last minute stop in Minnesota for tomorrow. That is typically a Democratic stronghold. Clinton touched down in Florida, where her lead has shrunk to the point where now it is a dead heat between the two. Today, each candidate made a closing argument. My contract with the American voter begins with a plan to end government corruption and to take our country back from the special interests. And, you know, I used to be on the other side of things, in case you didn't know. And I led a very nice life. But I also love our country. And this was an easy decision. I went from being the ultimate insider to being an outsider like they've never seen before. We are doing so well. This is a movement like they've never, ever seen. I have spent my career fighting for kids and families. And if you elect me, that's what I'll keep doing. Now, my friends. You are a hardy bunch standing out here in the rain. I don't think I need to tell you all of the wrong things about Donald Trump. But here's what I want you to remember. I want to be the president for everybody. Everybody who agrees with me, people who don't agree with me, people who vote for me, people who don't vote for me. Well, in the latest Fox News poll, Hillary Clinton holds a two-point national lead over Donald Trump. That is squeaky tight, 45 to 43 percent in a four-way race, which includes the Libertarian and Green Party candidates. Let's kick things off now live with Fox team coverage. Carl Cameron is in Denver, Colorado at this hour following the Trump team. And we will start with Jennifer Griffin in Philadelphia with the Clinton campaign. What are they saying about early voting there? 
Well, it's very interesting, Harris. On board her plane flying from Florida here to Philadelphia, uh, her campaign manager, Robbie Mook, noted that early voting um, ha is ending tonight or midday tomorrow in Florida and North Carolina, and they're seeing some very interesting results. In Nevada, in particular, where early voting ended on Friday, they are seeing record turnouts, and they believe, uh, the Clinton campaign believes, that Donald Trump would have to win by 10 percent on Election Day in Nevada in order to win Nevada. Hillary Clinton, while she was in Florida today, visited Little Haiti. Um, that's where she made one of her stops. She was joined by Trayvon Martin's mother, Sabrina Fulton, one of the Black Lives Matter's mothers of the movement. As part of their closing argument, we've learned that Gold Star father Kaiser Khan will join Clinton in New Hampshire tomorrow night as she makes her closing argument. Back to you, Harris. Where is the Clinton campaign focusing in the coming days? I mean, really hours. Well, it's really interesting. They are going to be taking their ground game, uh, and she is going to be uh, here in Pennsylvania, going to New Hampshire, and also now we've learned to Michigan. These are states that did not have early voting, and so they're going to be spending a lot of time there in the next 48 hours. Um, she will be at a Katy Perry concert, a Get Out the Vote concert here with Stevie Wonder in Philadelphia. Uh, that's another effort to fire up millennials and suburban moms from the Collar Counties. Concert like we saw in Cleveland last night with Jay-Z and Beyonce say, firing up African-American voters who have been less than enthusiastic, less enthusiastic than they were for President Obama. Th this campaign is going to come down to machine versus momentum. We'll have to see how it plays out, but it may be that on Tuesday that Latino voters, voters who were seeing coming out in record numbers, may have written uh, a new history, uh, a new chapter in the history of American voting. Back to you, Harris. All right. No early voting in Pennsylvania, but I have a question coming up, so we're going to play something a a little bit different than than we normally do. Jennifer, stay put because we're going to bring you back in a moment. Donald Trump is on a battleground blitz. We're waiting for him to take the stage at a rally in Nevada. His campaign says it has the momentum in the home stretch and they are hoping to ride a wave right into the White House. Carl Cameron live in Denver. Carl. Hi, Harris. And as Jen was talking about, uh, Nevada could be tough for Donald Trump. He got a, bought a, a body blow today from Ron Ralston, the Silver State's premier political reporter, who said because of the early vote pile up on the Democratic side, it was a knock on four million, uh, four million doors. There'll be about 100,000 volunteers involved in that. And Trump plays big data, too. Uh, and they've, uh, he, has, he has a couple of companies that have been collecting big data around the country. And uh, one of them was the operation that used to work for Ted Cruz. It's called Cambridge Analytica, and they use social media very, very effectively. This is what the Obama administration kind of perfected, and Hillary Clinton inherited that on the Democratic side. Uh, the Republicans have been working very, very hard to catch up when it comes to using social media and big data to find voters. What Trump has been doing throughout his campaign is he's been using big data and social media to find pockets, mostly in the rural exurbs, well past the suburbs or the inner city, to try to find the most conservative Republican voters that he can bring out. That's why he was in uh, Selma, North Carolina the other day. Uh, that's why he's going to go to Reno tonight. And when he comes to Denver, uh, it'll be a huge event that has, he's going to get most of the audience from, social media from outside of the city, not from inter, in, in the interior. They both got big data, they're both using it, but more importantly, they're both spending less on TV commercials than the trend line has been since the beginning of television. Yeah, Harris. that's really interesting. And I know from talking to the, the Trump campaign that when they do hold their big events, just like Hillary Clinton is doing with these free concerts, that it is also an opportunity for them to make sure that people are registered. Because what you want to do with these events, Carl, is make sure that they don't, aren't just loving you, but they're loving you enough to go vote, especially in those states like Pennsylvania where people have yet to begin voting. Carl, always good to see you. Sorry we lost Jen Griffin. She, By the way, I don't know if you noticed, she was on a moving bus. So sometimes technical difficulties happen when you're, you know, you're crisscrossing the place. Carl, thank you. Fox News is America's election headquarters. And stick with us on election day and night for live coverage, up to the minute results and in-depth analysis as our America chooses our next president. We're live Tuesday. Three days to go. Let's take a look at the race for president according to the Fox News electoral scoreboard now. And you can see Hillary Clinton still has an advantage. It's narrowing, though. To win, Donald Trump needs the solid Republican states, the leaning Republican states, and all the toss-up states as well. He'd also need one more state like North Carolina, Michigan, or Pennsylvania to win.
have always escalated. This year is the exact opposite. Uh, right now, there have been 3.3 million ads run uh, across the country and about $2.5 billion spent. It sounds astronomical, but in fact, that's down from 2012. And uh, when you look at who's spending the most, Hillary Clinton is spending more money on ads in more places than Donald Trump has. And to put an even finer point on it, Bernie Sanders, who hasn't been in the race for a long time, has actually aired more TV ads than Donald Trump has. Uh, now, what does this tell us about the Trump campaign? Donald Trump has gotten a tremendous amount of free news coverage and hasn't thought that it was necessary to run those ads. Uh, most of the inventory is bought up, so it's not like you can, uh, f in places that matter, find a spot to put an ad on because they're all already booked. Uh, so it tells us that the advertising strategy, the actual tactical strategy on which battleground states to spend the last 72 hours, uh, all are changing in this election from what has been the historical practice. And when it comes to going to Minnesota, a lot of Republicans are wondering if it's a gamble that can pay off for Trump or potentially a gamble that could cost him the election. All right, Carl, thank you very much. As I did with Jen, I'm going to ask you to stay right where you are because we're going to bring Jennifer Griffin back in and let's talk ground game now. Jen, I'm going to start with you and with the Clinton camp doing what they need to do to make sure that they're tight on the ground. I read something today about those concerts. And uh, they're not just a way for them to get out free tickets to people. It also allows them to analyze and to collect information on people who are at those concerts and to also mobilize them. So we're going to work to get her uh, technical shot back up. We're having some technical difficulties with Jen's satellite uh, shot. So we'll go straight to Carl Cameron with this. So, Carl, I laid it out there a little bit. Clinton's broadening out her, her expanse, if you will, on how to work that ground game sure, with these free concerts. Sure. So it's a way to get information about people and mobilize them. But on the Trump side, they're starting to spend some cash on the ground game. What does that look like? Well, they're, they're, they've got a, a, a collaborative effort with the Republican National Committee. Uh, and they have somewhere in the neighborhood of 100,000 shifts going on this weekend uh, on, t on the phones, uh, calling up folks, making sure that they get to the polls. They want to